Well, first start by saying there's, I, I think in many ways this season, as much as it was disappointing in the end, was a step forward for us. We're good. Contrary to what may some people think here, um, or our family, we're really good. What? What the fuck? We're actually doing the fan base a favor <laughs> and asking for their patience to win the World Series while we continue to build a sustainably good roster. The payoff. A wave and a miss. The sweep away off the plate. It gets Garber for the second straight AB. He struck him out. 95 from Ryan. And again, Seattle struggling with runners in scoring position. Couple of singles. Oh, I'd have punched out too. Seven Two strikes. Rodriguez goes down swinging. Kimbrell with a K to end it. And the Orioles begin this West Coast. Swing and a miss. Strike three. Nasty. Egypt. No, you know. So welcome back, or welcome for the first time if you're new to the channel, and consider subscribing if you enjoy the videos, as just like George Washington once said, if you don't hit, you might as well be a bitch. And that couldn't relate any more to the first place team that currently sits atop the American League West. Now, typically when a team is in first place, there's not too much to complain about. There's always ways to get better, obviously, no matter who you are, like Baltimore, for example. They finished off the first half of the season on somewhat of a rough note that would have been a lot rougher if they didn't squeak across a miracle rally on the final final day, but that doesn't mean Oriole fans should be upset. There's a lot to be excited about, so no reason to be too concerned, at least not yet. But in the case of a team like the first place Seattle Mariners, there's a lot of reason to be concerned, and it's been this way for months. This team has had an issue improving their offense for a minute now, but don't worry, you as a Mariner fan should actually be thanking the Mariners for doing you a favor. What favor? Well, I, I don't really know exactly, but if that favor is watching this team dominate on the mound for nine innings only for the offense to do as much as Boba Fett did in the original Star Wars trilogy, hell yeah, that's a great product. Mariners fans should actually pay extra for their tickets for how generous they're being treated. The Mariners, despite being an objectively bad offense, have been in first place pretty much the entire season, and at one point even had the largest lead by a first place team in any division, higher than the Phillies, higher than the Dodgers, but as expected, that hasn't gone on to be the case for too long. I know they're not in these divisions, so no, it doesn't really matter at the end of the day, but I think it's important to compare what position the Mariners would be in if they weren't in the division that they are. If you took the Mariners out of the AL West and plucked them into the NL West, for example, another division that's been very mid so far, they'd be in second place, same with the NL Central. But the Mariners would be in fourth place in the AL East, the AL Central, and third place in the NL East. The Mariners have been riding the overall weak first halves of the defending champions in Houston, two teams who have played better as of late, especially Houston. As remember that largest lead that they had in baseball over anyone that I talked about of any division? Well, it's pretty clear that that was a testament to how bad the Astros and Rangers were than to how good the Mariners were. Because once the Astros started playing like a real baseball team again, they've since shrunk that division lead to one game at the time of this video, and the Rangers are five back. The Texas teams have been licking their chops all season long, knowing that once they remember how to win baseball games again and learn how to repeat that process, the division Division is more than just in reach, much more. It can be one in a bloodbath, with Seattle ending in a distant second or third place. And it really sucks because the Mariners do have something special going on with their pitching. They have arguably the best pitching staff in all of baseball. So they figured that part out, the act of not giving up runs, but they unfortunately haven't figured out the act of scoring runs themselves. And what's also scary is the idea that it could be a Seattle thing, in a sense where the Mariners, for whatever reason, from an organizational standpoint, cannot develop hitters or bring hitters to the their full potential. And there's no proof of this necessarily. I don't know if there ever could be for something like this, but there are definitely trends to show this being the case, and it goes back years. Cattell Marte was internationally signed with the Mariners back in 2010 and played a couple of seasons there, and he was pretty good in 2015, his first year where he played just 57 games. Nothing crazy, but good. But in 2016, this time in 119 games, he was awful. One of the worst hitters in the league and hit just one home run, ending his Mariner career with three home runs in 176 games when he was traded to Arizona. And since joining the Snakes, Cattell Marte has been one of the most consistent hitters and overall players in baseball for eight years now, someone I would argue is the most underrated. He also found power in his bat once he left Seattle, hitting as many as 32 home runs in 2019, 25 last year, and about 20 so far 
far this year. Not that he played many games as a Mariner, but Chris Taylor was as bad as it gets. Dude was just existing until the Dodgers traded for him in a deal Mariners general manager Jerry DePoto regrets to this day, publicly even saying at one point it was the worst one he's ever made as Taylor has gone on to play a big part in many winning Dodger teams through the years. And the latest example is Teoscar Hernandez, who's the best one considering there's two different times he's proven Seattle is the common denominator. Teoscar has been a good hitter his entire career. Throughout the six years he played with the Blue Jays, Teoscar Hernandez had an OPS of 821, which is really good. He gets traded to Seattle after 2022 and goes on to have the worst season of his career in 2023, hitting to the lowest OPS of his career while playing almost every game for the Mariners. He still actually had a good year, all things considered, but it was considerably down compared to past years. He then goes to LA and what happens? He's back to really what he was in Toronto. I mean, it's pretty night and day. And if Teoscar was still in Seattle, his numbers are probably not as good right now, just like it would be the case for anyone. Which, let's face it, it's probably true. Seattle has been known to be a hellhole for hitters, and arguably the worst park for hitting in baseball, which is also why I can see the same being the case for guys like Chris Taylor and Gatal Marte. Maybe if those guys stayed and DePoto was able to go back and never trade those guys, maybe things would stay the same and nothing would change and they'd never reach their potential. We'll never know, but the way Seattle is gives us evidence to believe so, and at the very least, it certainly doesn't help. They changed the name of the ballpark from Safeco Field to T-Mobile Park several years back, and if the plan at all for that was to hope it changed the way this ballpark operates... It didn't work, and it never was going to. The only way to make it work is to move out of Seattle, which for the record, I'm not saying should happen. I'm just stating the reality of how it works. The Mariners, of course, in Seattle are near sea level, and that means the air is dense, which means the baseball doesn't go as far. And T-Mobile Park also has a marine layer, which is a shallow layer of air that forms when warm air moves atop a body of cooler water and becomes saturated with water vapor. It's stronger than just fog or thick clouds, and it's typically strongest in cooler temperatures in the spring. There you go. You just learned more than you ever will in 18 years of public school. You're welcome. It's pretty known that Seattle is just not a fun place to hit. The players know it. Alex Rodriguez, who began his career in Seattle, was a massive advocate for the retractable roof to be closed, being convinced fly balls would carry better with the Seattle sky and weather not interfering. 25 years in a JLo A Rod relationship later, and it's still the same. And not only will this objectively affect the baseball, it can also become a mental thing as well for the Mariner hitters, knowing at the back of their mind that hitters are already at a disadvantage in Seattle. But there's also another factor to balls being affected by the weather. In order for the Mariners to have the weather be affecting the balls that they hit, you actually have to hit the ball, and the Mariners have a hard time just doing that, let alone any damage once they do. Because like Thomas Jefferson said, if you don't hit the balls, you might as well hit your own instead. And it's so true, I mean, after all, we are talking about the same franchise that has as many ruptured testicles as playoff appearances over the last 44 years. The Mariners lead all of baseball with over 1,000 strikeouts, more than 60 strikeouts ahead of the next worst being Oakland. So you have an offense that doesn't do any damage when the ball is hit, being close to last in all of baseball and slugging percentage on base percentage and OPS, which is when you add those two together, and one that also strikes out more than anyone. Add those two together and you get what you currently have in Seattle, a team that's falling apart fast if they don't get help and improve in certain areas because needing outside help is undeniable at this point. The Mariners need to trade for an impact bat, but they also need at least some of the current guys they have to either not be abysmal or average. Because Houston's coming, there's a good chance the Rangers are too, and missing out on the playoffs for the second straight year after the promising finish to 2022 would be beyond disappointing. It would be justified anger toward a front office and ownership that's neglected to fix an issue that's been going on not just all year, but it's an ongoing issue that goes beyond just that. So things have to change both internally and externally, or else this first place team will be as good as Disney Star Wars. Dead. Let me know your thoughts and thank you for watching.